What's up? It's me, Darrell Smith, and today we're making some game day potluck recipes that will definitely give you baller status. Shanae Ogumake is joining me in the kitchen today. We even got Chef Arrows, AKA the billionaire oh, chef, really? joining us, and I'm excited to learn, teach, and eat. All right? Let's do it. We got a lot to talk about, but we also have a recipe that's going to take a lot of things. OK. All right? So let's get to it. Let's get it. We're going to make some veggie chili walking nachos. Oh, veggie chili walking. By the way, like, nachos are one of my favorite foods. Is that right? Just like snack foods. And today is your lucky day because we're going to mix it with chips, which I feel like everybody likes. Yeah, that's how we have to do it. We're going to put, like, eh, I would say, like, a tablespoon or two tablespoons of oil, and we're going to start sauteing these. White onion. And then, over here... I know my agent, she's here, actually, in the building. She's yeah. laughing at me because cooking has been on our, like, bucket list. Look how far we've come! <laughs> We're gonna get a little bit of our garlic. We got the onion, we got the garlic. Yeah. We're gonna add a little bit of our tomato paste. Oh, so this is, like... So, by the way, onions, mm -hmm. garlic, and tomato are, like, the base of every good food, in my opinion. And it's the base of a lot of Nigerian foods. Did, did you... So... Habaneros, bell peppers, too. Who was the one who cooked in your house growing up? My mom and my dad, but okay. primarily my mom. My mom, so I'm one of four girls. Okay. We always say the Ogumake sisters. So, so this is a, just a little bit of chipotle pepper. Oh, chipotle pepper. Next time we'll do habanero. Oh, okay. Is but that chipotle a... is cool. Now, do you have four sisters? So he cooks sisters? two as well. Three sisters. Three four sisters. of us total. Yeah. Got it. And one brother? No brothers. But you want to be? You want to be the bro? I could be. You could be the bro. Yeah, I'll be the brother. You could be Why the bro. Not? Big little bro. Now we want to start adding our fire roasted tomatoes and seasoning. We got pinto beans and we got black beans, and both go into the tub. We just stir these all together. So where are you from? So I'm from, born and raised in Houston, Texas. Okay. I'm a black girl in this world. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, you know, the only black woman in my private school. Yes. Um, but then at home, it was Niger, you know? So Nigerian culture, that's what we got on the weekends with my parents' friends. Wait, let me see that. How are we doing? Are you going to give my wrist a break? Yeah, you good. I saw you over here. You, you were stirring this shit hard, too. <laughs> I'm coachable. You came together well. I'm I like coachable. it. I'm we coachable. We need a little salt and pepper in here. OK, go for it. I also want to add just a little bit of chili powder to this. And all we want to do is let this simmer down. And... So yeah, I would just say that like growing up in Houston was great because I got to experience a lot of different aspects of life and all different types of foods as well, Hell you know? Yeah. We have our beans simmering right here. Look at beans, those. Beans, greens, potatoes, yep. So this right, is no? this in the future. Oh, you oh, like that? I like that. Does it smell good? OK, let me get it. Yeah, waffle. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that was quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nice and bubbly. We're going to get our uh, station ready. OK. So have you ever heard of chili Fritos or like, you ever like, heard of chili Fritos? Are you talking about like Fritos, like chips? Yeah, yeah. Bruh. Yes, we're 90s babies. Like, My didn't man, we grow yeah. up with our lunch boxes full of Cheetos, Fritos? Take a little bit of those beans. We're just going to put them right over top, right onto those chips, baby. I'm a huge fan of nachos, so I'm, like, very yeah. curious how this is going to turn out. So what I've done is I've taken just a little bit of crema. OK. We got some cotilla cheese. OK. And then we have some pickled onions. Nice. Nice and cute. Nice. That looks... Delicious. With these, be careful, because that stew was very hot. So maybe oh, yeah. just I test it out before. OK. And let me know what you think. OK, come on. Here we go. Amen. This is your idea. This is good to me. Don't make me wait. What are you looking at? You like it's it? phenomenal. I knew so it. Good. I knew it. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I mean, it's hard to mess up a nacho, though. No, that's a fact. These are really good, though, actually. These are really <laughs> good. And you're right, the onion, good. like, is that different? Mm -hmm. Pop. I don't like it as vegetarian stew. I mean, like, it ain't, it ain't too heavy. The beautiful thing about this delicious bag of the goodness that we mm. have. You know how they do it on Instagram? Like, you see? <laughs> you know how they do that, like, to get the background? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you could just eat this it's while you're walking, me, while you're doing whatever you got going on. You can dance. While you're posing it. with it. You want to see my dance? No. Yeah, you do. Here, let's eat and do my dance. Let me oh, dance. no! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try this. Mm. I she, love it. She's going to finish these. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to finish these. Too well. <laughs> we'll see you in a second. Welcome back. And guess what? We got a special guest joining us today. Let's Are you excited? It. I'm very excited. Chef, 
¿Cómo lo ves? ¡Eh! 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 The billionaire chef. Who has taken Los Angeles by storm <laughs> and is my Nigerian brother from another mother. Hey. We're going to make a, it's a suya spiced brisket. And that sounds exciting. But we're going to mix it with almost like a Cuban sandwich. OK, a fusion. Right. We got some bread for you. So, Chef Eros, we have some bread. Oh. I'm going to ask you to toast these a little bit of minute. What you think? I saw you taste it. All right. Yeah. This is hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. Are you ready? Okay. So what am I doing? You're just going to add. Mm. Like into here? Four, four of these tea tablespoons. Gotcha, into here. Mix it all up, gotcha. please. I'm gonna grab a knife. Eros, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Go on. So I had this theory that like kids of Nigerians, right? Nigerian children growing up, mm -hmm. our parents are like kind of more into the tough love than the actual love. Mm -hmm. So I was saying like what would define Nigerian food? I think that's where the parents actually show their love. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Do you yeah. agree? Yeah. Very much so. Um, I think our parents believe in slap and stroke. So when you like you get a spanking and you get a rubbing some afterwards, yeah, it's like they spank you and they love you. Tell after. me. And you grow up to love it eventually. Like huh. It doesn't feel like wrong, you know? It doesn't yeah. feel like <laughs> when last you get spanked. Great. I actually never got spanked. Ooh. And our parents rarely spanked, but I think they like know how to mentally spank you too mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is just cut these into strips. You don't want to cook these too long because it'll become tough. So instead, cut it thin and just add a little bit more spice to it because we really want that suya to come through when you bite into it. I'm going to season this up. We got some extra suya spice. Waddle these around, get it nice and spiced up. All you want to do is take a little bit of oil, and we're going to put these right into our pan. Just let that go. All we want is a nice sear. Once we got it, turn it right over. You grew up in Texas yes. as a Nigerian. You grew yes. up in Nigeria yes. as a Nigerian. Yes. Tell me the difference. Like, I, I, I want to start with that because so, I feel like culturally, there has to be some type of difference when you grow up in the source versus growing up here, but there yeah. also are some similarities. To me, there's no difference to some degree, meaning I grew up in a Nigerian house even though I was in Houston, Texas. Okay. But the difference is I don't speak Igbo if, even though my family is Igbo. And I think that's one of the biggest things that when I, you know, go back home to Nigeria, everyone's like, oh, Akata, like, you're just, <laughs> you know, black mm -hmm. American. Mm -hmm. or you don't mm -hmm. understand. It's funny, here in the US, a lot of times I get criticized like, oh, you're Nigerian American, you're not fully black American, meaning oh, you wow. don't have the generational histories that we have here yeah. in the US. And then I'll go back home to Nigeria, it's like, oh, you're a Kata, you're, yeah. you're not fully, fully Nigerian. What is Igbo? What is the difference in... So there's a, the, the three majority tribes in Nigeria, okay. right? Yeah. There's the Igbos, the Hausas, and the Yorubas. The Igbos are from the east of Nigeria, okay. right? And there's just another Igbo. tribe, so she's Igbo. The Yorubas are from the west of Nigeria. I'm Yoruba. And then the Hausas are from the north of Nigeria. Um, that's where the capital is, Abuja is in the north, you know. As a matter of fact, Suya is from the north. Oh, wow. Nice. An education. Oh, that... History lesson. An education. All in one. Beautiful. We're gonna start to assemble our sandwiches. This is a picante provolone. We got some, um, what kind of pickles are these, dill? Got some sliced dill pickle. A little bit of that onion. Quick. We need something to smash. What do you think about this, chef? Yeah. Can we smash with that? The moment of truth. Hey, smash that thing. Oh, careful! Ooh, sure. ooh, ooh. Are you OK? What's happening here? What the hell? You said someone's going to come <laughs> in right, and shake this thing. I think, I think we're good. Tell me about um, the community of food, because I've been to Ile, and I've felt what it feels like to be around a communal table. I felt what it feels like to share food. I feel like as an African-American man who's never been to Africa, who doesn't really, I don't really know my African heritage or roots. So I definitely feel like there's no better way to experience a culture or people mm -hmm. than to taste the food. You know, you yeah. go to a country, the first thing you want to do is try out the food. You know, taste the food and you know who the people are. Yeah. You know, and, and doing it at a dining table where you're able to have conversations, you know, about that and about other things that are related to your life is, is a second to none. All right, let's dress it up and make it cute. Yeah. Oh. I'll grab a There we go. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of that Chimichurri. And I'll sprinkle my imagination. Mm, sprinkle your love. <laughs> your sauce. love. My love. <laughs> oh. Drip, drip, drip. Oh. Yeah. It gets better and better. Oh, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, fellas. Bon appetit. My family bon here. Appetit. Bon appetit. What, what was I saying? Bon appetito? Suya spice. Bon appetito. Let's mm. get it. Ooh. 
This is smacking. <laughs> he can't even. Yeah. I love the spice that's coming through from that suya. Mm -hmm. yeah. The tang from the pickles. Mm -hmm. Ooh. The brisket is just perfect. Mm -hmm. You never had a Cuban sandwich. I think that's what I like most about it. When you get something like mustard and you get that vinegary bite, mm -hmm. as well as a little bit of that spice, and then you add that suya, which also gives it more spice, and then the chimichurri just brings it all together. I gotta I'm a friend, you got some on your lip. Mm. Now it's gone. There we go, thank you. Real friend. I think I speak for everybody in saying that this was absolutely delicious. What? <laughs> so good. <laughs> really, really good. Really, really, really Chef good. Chef yes, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you your love. Me. Thank you for having I, me. I appreciate your wisdom. Mm. And if you want the best Joe Loft in LA, and that, and that is actually a fact because he won best yes. Joe Loft in LA. So congratulations yeah. to him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Make you. sure you visit you. Ely. Yep. And great news, we're opening a restaurant. Hey! Oh my god! Congratulations! When is, when is it coming? Very, very soon. Soon very and very soon. very soon. You know how we say. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you. Go check it out. It's halftime, ladies and gentlemen. And everybody at home, Shanae, I would love for you to show them your special move. Oh, my special move? Yeah, You're yeah, talking about? That one. Oh, not my that dance move? Nah, oh, my basketball move? One. It's just the behind the back. But it's not like the stop and like go like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the come in front of me. It's the like whole wrap around. Oh. You know what I mean? Like not okay. the like stop and like, yeah. Yeah. It's the what? Oh, wait. It's the wrap around. Like Boom. so that you don't lose your stride. You know what I'm saying? You got it? Let me see. Get past me. Okay. <laughs> What's your move? I'm like this, right here. Okay. Ah! Yeah, I'm gonna come here, boom. Boom. Uh, uh. I think basketball is really about tendencies. Like the teams that win, they know the team tendency, but they also know the individual tendency. Yeah. So like you talking your step back, if you're coming down and guarding me, I'm gonna know you like that step back. So I might bait you into space come to on. make you think. So come on. Then I already know what's coming, bam. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a game of tactics. It's not just like, oh, you're coming down the court, dunk, yeah. or like, oh, like shot. A lot of times they're taking what the defense is actually giving. Well, it also helps when you got go-go gadget arms. Oh, so yes. You to block <laughs> shots from any distance on the court. Now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. Mm. You want some dessert? Oh, yeah. I'm here uh... for some sweet dessert. Uh... <laughs> Well, we're going to make some truffles. Oh, wow. But we're not going any all the truffles. way. Yeah, you're truffles here. Truffles ain't easy. Well, I got you. OK, is this what the like famous locust beans that you've been talking about? Smell it. It smells like shit. I don't know if I should smell it. Yeah, they look a little smell scary. It. Yeah, it stinks. Actually, it's like, it's like, like a, oh, yeah, it tastes good. Like shitty That's smell. Cool. It tastes good at the end. Don't be scared. A little bit of cream. I'm going to say about a cup, maybe a little more. That's good. And we just want to stir these things together. It's going to infuse it with some flavor, with some funk, make that chocolate nice and delicious. And then what I'm going to do is just go back here and melt some chocolate. Gotcha. Let's talk some hoops. OK. Stanford, what, yes. what, what, was it, um, what was your recruiting process like? Oh, um, yes. Here, I yeah. had the most nerdy recruiting process to Stanford University, mind you. Oh, yeah, yeah, Stanford. But like my sister was already there, so they knew it was like, OK, she probably really wants to play with her sister, because yeah. I've always played with her. But I, you know how like normally when people, you talk about top recruits, in the men's game, it's like Kentucky, Duke. Yeah. And then you go to like, what do they call it? Like Big Blue Madness or Big Blue Night or whatever Oh, yeah, is. yeah, Midnight Madness. Midnight Madness, yeah, thank yeah. you. And like Drake, Stanford. Foreman, yeah, yeah. that's not Stanford. <laughs> Hell no. So I went and it actually worked because I'm a nerd, <laughs> like you're a nerd. Absolutely. And so I met Secretary of State, former, uh, but Dr. Condoleezza Rice. Oh, wow. On my official visit to Stanford when I was in high school, I'm I met this. Chief Justice John Roberts. <laughs> but yeah, so like a lot of times all these academic visitors that are elite, you know, in the yeah. world come. And then also, I was at the peak of Stanford athletics. Yeah. I was just very grateful to be a part of it. and. A part of also three Final Fours. Always a bridesmaid when it came to championships, not the bride. You love Final Fours. I love Final Fours, yeah. but I would love a national championship <laughs> even more. <laughs> even more. I hear that. While that's coming up to a simmer, I'm going to get my chocolate from the microwave. We had some caramel, we had some chocolate, and we're just going to mix these together until it's nice and smooth. Once that starts to bubble and it's hot, I'm going to straighten it right into my chocolate. There we go. A little more than half to start. Let's get it mixed together. 
Essentially, what we're doing is making a ganache for our truffles. A ganache is just two-part chocolate slash solid. So for us, we got caramel and chocolate. As you see it start to come together, I'll add the rest of my cream. Same thing, we just mix it all together. Is your, was your sister your motivator in playing basketball, or did you just grow up in a basketball family? <laughs> the last thing we knew to do uh, was to play basketball. So again, okay, first generation Nigerian-American, uh -huh. and we all were like straight A's at home. That's part of the culture. You have to get good grades. Doctor, lawyer, engineer, all that type of stuff. Let's taste it. And, oh, was it good? Oh! We're gonna taste it too, go I'm ahead. gonna get a little, yeah, a little do that. You like that? Oh my yeah, god, good. that was the beans? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Wow. Transformation, speaking yeah, of funky up. stuff. So basically, growing up, four girls in one house. Think mm -hmm. about it. Like, we're all doing great academically, mm -hmm. but then we have energy. Yeah. And so my mom and my dad were like, we got to put them into something to tire mm -hmm. them out, <laughs> you know, at, at the end of the day. And so there was a gymnastics gym right in our neighborhood. We did gymnastics, and then one of my mom's coworkers came to one of our practices and was like, why do you have your girls in gymnastics? <laughs> like, your girls are tall. And I'll never forget, you know the uneven bars in gymnastics? Yeah. I would never be great at that. And I was like, and then I started thinking back. My legs were so long that my butt would hit the floor and I would never have traction to go over. And so my parents were like, okay, we're gonna take this tip and put them into basketball. Mm -hmm. So I played with her. So she taught me the game, and then a year later I started playing because I was better. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Hold on. Hold okay. that thought. Okay. Chocolate is melted. We're okay. gonna pop this in a freezer. Okay. And shout out the cheat TV magic. Shout out to this TV magic right here. Whoa, instantly. It's like half Whoa. the size of what I put in there, but it's still the same thing. It's still the same thing. Exactly. Okay, lovely. So to end that story, so my sister taught me the game, and then we taught, and then, then taught the rest of us, and we started playing together in AAU, in high school, in college, and the rest was history. It really transformed our lives. And so I always tell people we fell into basketball, mm -hmm. and then we fell in love with it. Okay, Squeeze it's going to take some real muscles. Squeeze it like that. Oh, so like now we're gonna see like how much stronger you are. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, we got like some real strong ladies, real strong hands Roar. over here. <laughs> <laughs> so you you say you got a lot going on. So you gave up that role, and now you everywhere. Host, yeah. making a comeback to the WNBA. Yeah. What is that process like? Like, what is it like to? Yeah. You took some time off, and now you're ready to come back. One, what drives you to come back to the WNBA when you're seeing so much success in all of these other di different fields? Yeah, I've, I've always told people it's crazy because a lot of the things that people see me benefiting from right now, like being on television and yeah. being an NBA analyst on air for ESPN, a lot of those things came through basketball, through adversity. So I have had two major injuries. You know what injuries are like. Absolutely. I've had two major injuries. I had right knee microfracture surgery, left Achilles surgery. And so I've wow. had seasons where I've been an all-star and then have major surgery and out for a year and a half, then yeah. an another all-star year and then out for major surgeries. Those are tough to come back from. Really tough to come yeah. back from. And I think as I've gotten older, um, science has changed to really help give me, yeah. give me an opportunity to really redeem myself in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not easy because, like, no. on one hand, like, the game is what I love and I want to compete and my goal is to win a championship with my sister. So I've been blessed with an opportunity to, you know, work on air as well based on my hard work while I was down and out, yeah. you know, recovering and having a little bit of time. And so it's like, okay, it's hard to be great at both, but I know I, I'm impactful at both. How's that? That's a good job. Thank you. That's good for you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, you drop it in, twist it around. Okay. Take this. Okay, shall I try this one? There you go. Drop it in. Just like that. All right. And bam. We'll put these back in the freezer. Shout out to it's, TV oh, Magic. Who are you trying to be? Usher. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> spin and fail. Truffles. Amazing. Wow. Oh, yeah. I can't the believe it. I'm so bad. Just spin what? around and oh here we God. go. Are you going to draw lines on them? Well, you're going to draw it. Okay, yeah. I there thought so. Go. I was like, yeah, do, you know yeah, how to, yeah. do you know how to do it? I don't even know what a basketball looks okay, like on top. So I can do it here. It's not the prettiest. I don't know if I want to put the one down the middle. Love it. The beautiful thing about this is that if you're hosting a potluck for the game, these are beautiful to put out. Oh, yeah. You could even design them any way you like, as Shanae is doing right here with the long hair. Becky with the good hair. OK, cheers. That's hella chocolate, but it's good. <laughs> That's a lot of chocolate, though. This is the most chocolate I've ever had. Yeah. If I wear a truffle, 
That would be you. That would be me. A big ball of chocolate. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. How was your day? What'd you think? So I'm a beginner in the kitchen. Yeah. I'm just starting to like really find my own style. But like, what? First of all, you are phenomenal at what you do. We had so many great conversations you. while you were like doing the recipes and, and most of the work. <laughs> I know I killed it with the stirring, but this, all of this was just delicious. Thank what you. do you think your favorite was out of the dishes? It's a tough one because I don't really do desserts, but mm -hmm. these truffles and the chocolate was amazing. These chips, this assortment, you know, the chili, it was so easy, but Should like. Nailed it. But I have to go here with the suya spice, and then you had the chimichurri and my Texas brisket. So it was a fusion of so many cultures. And your girl was hungry. I you saw, yeah, you saw yeah, how I. Saw I, that, yeah. I you tore it up. I tore it up. As you should, though. You came hungry and you left I did full. come here hungry and I, I left and delivered. No, that's love. With the tea. When you're thinking of anything from Marsh Madness, any tailgate, any potluck, these are great dishes to bring to it. I also feel as though they're easy to make. And yeah. Without any further ado, I want to give a cheers to you. Ah! So what are we cheersing to? We're cheersing to success in the future okay. and a resurgence to your WNBA career. You gonna bust some ass. Oh, we gonna kill it. Amen. Just like I killed you. <laughs> Psych. Woo, until next time, bye. Whenever you're searing anything, you wanna make sure you got really high heat and hot oil so that when you put it into the pan, you get the crust as fast as possible because if you put it too low, it's gonna be mushy and nobody's gonna to wanna to eat it. If you wanna do uh, a sear on something that's already cooked, that's the method. If you wanna sear something that's uncooked, it's the same exact method, but after you put the sear on it, you just gotta puff it into an oven or you gotta cover it and cook it lower and slower. But the idea of a sear is to get a crust on the outside as fast as possible. Look how crusty that is. Yeah, we love that.